Hello, welcome to Wielding the Word. Um, today we're going to begin with lesson one. Last week we had our introductory uh, video and we, over the, the course of about 30 minutes, which is a little longer than we planned, but um, we, we talked about what this series will be about and to make that very, uh, very concise, give you just an overview, just quickly again, we will be talking about the Word of God, how to understand it, how to learn it, how to uh, how to grow in the in in the uh, the spirit through the intake the eating of the word of God and then also how to how to handle the word of God how to wield the word of God so we're going to begin today with uh, our our first lesson uh, which is entitled the fear of the Lord and we're talking about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom but also the beginning I believe of understanding the word of God. We'll look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, and we'll look at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. And again, I'm primarily um, reading from the New King James Version in this, uh, in this series, and we'll talk about some other versions next week and some other things. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, and get started there. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Let me, while we're reading, let's go ahead and read Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 5 also. It said, My son, if your words, I'm sorry, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. What is the fear of the Lord and how does fear of the Lord impact our understanding of the Word of God? And if we look at these two scriptures, we see some very powerful things related to that. So what we're trying to do here is, is get, this, uh, get this in our heart. First of all, the, fe the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when we begin to fear the Lord properly, we get discernment, understanding, uh, which, which could be um, synonyms with, with wisdom. But we also have to understand that if, if, we're, if we want this wisdom, this understanding, this discernment, uh, we need to seek for it as silver. The Word of the Lord also tells us that if we lack wisdom, let us ask of God who gives liberally. And uh, we can see that in James, the book of James. But uh, I want us to consider, first of all, what does wisdom mean? And, and I'll get to where we're going here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But what does wisdom mean? Uh, Dictionary.com defines wisdom as knowledge of what is true or right coupled with just judgment to action. So what we're seeing here is what we could what we could understand from that is that wisdom is knowing knowing what's good, what's right, also having good judgment that comes from that knowledge and putting it into action. So we're not just talking about knowledge and we're not just talking about discernment or understanding, but we're talking about all of these combined into wisdom, which, which pushes us from just uh, knowing a subject to, to making wise decisions and acting. And we need that with the word of God. We need that desperately. And the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Um, the word that we see in Proverbs chapter 9 uh, verse 10 and Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1 through 5 that is translated into English as wisdom and I won't give you that word it's not really uh, we're not we're not doing a, a study today on on these words but what that word actually uh, means in the original language is comprehension understanding prudence and even skill so skill brings in that there's activity not just understanding as the word comprehension might give us um, we could say that it, it means uh, understanding how to gain and skillfully apply knowledge. This is the definition I want to give you today from my study. Um, we could say that wisdom is the understanding of how to gain and skillfully apply knowledge. How badly we need this from the Word of God. How badly we need the understanding of how to gain knowledge from the Word of God and to skillfully apply that knowledge in our lives. The body of Christ needs that terribly bad. And so the study that we're in uh, will help us to gain that. And 
we begin with the fear of the Lord. So my question, I have two questions I want to talk about and answer today, and hopefully we'll get this done in that 20-minute period. But um, the two questions that I want to talk about today, what is the fear of the Lord, first of all? And secondly, why do we need the fear of God to correctly understand his word? Now, I'm not going to necessarily take those in that order. I'm going to answer the second question first, and then we'll talk about what the fear of the Lord is. Uh, if we are to gain prop, proper biblical wisdom, we must have a healthy fear of God. Um, wisdom, which we've already defined as understanding how to gain and skillfully apply knowledge, uh, this wisdom comes from the Word of God. Uh, knowledge itself is worthless. Uh, if, if we have knowledge but don't understand how to use it, what good does it do us? It really doesn't do us any good at all. Uh, wisdom comes from God. God has already told us to, to ask Him if we need wisdom, and He'll give it to us. And I mentioned that. didn't point you to the exact Scripture, but I mentioned it. And so wisdom comes from God, and how to understand and use His Word is extremely important to us as Christians. And this all begins with the fear of the Lord. So if we understand that to, to really get the, the meaning from the Word of God and to learn what the Lord wants to teach us, it, it, it goes back to fearing Him properly. Then we will gain wisdom from the Word of God. Then we will understand that, that the Word of God is a powerful resource in, in our growth and in our understanding of, of how to, how to uh, apply the knowledge that we gain and how to skillfully pursue the ways of God. It, it's, it's powerful in so many ways, but it also brings that discernment. It brings comprehension. Um, all, of this, uh, all of this really, and I'm getting a little bit ahead, but all of this comes through a work of the Holy Spirit. And, and we'll, I'll jump back to that, but I want to just mention that to you because we need to understand it. So let's, let's look at what the fear of the Lord is. And we talked about what wisdom is by definition, but fear of the Lord begins, uh, or actually is the beginning of wisdom. So what is the fear of the Lord? There's, a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of studies about this, and a lot of people have talked about what the fear of the Lord actually is. And... Um, just to put it in a very, a very small package and, and to try to, uh, to tell you what it is, it's not being scared of God as much as it is an awesome refer uh, reverence of, of who he is, to hold him in awe. But I want to I give you a couple, um, a couple other words that, that uh, have been used to, to describe the fear of the Lord. And uh, Martin Luther, who started, uh, who started the Protestant movement, even though he didn't really necessarily mean to, I don't think, but uh, he, used, he used some words to describe this, and he did a, he did a great job with it. And I, I, I believe in pulling from, uh, from men of God from the past and what they have seen as long as it stays true to Scripture, and uh, there, there have been two words that have used have been used to describe the fear of God or the fear of the Lord, um, and and uh, one of those is servile fear, and the other is filial fear. Now, servile fear, the first one that I mentioned, is a fear. Let me read it to you. This is the fear that a servant might have with a very harsh or uncaring master. Uh, it's a deep fear that might that he might be punished or be st stricken down with no mercy or no no pity. This is not the fear of the Lord that we are supposed to have as Christians before God. Um, that there is a there is an aspect of this. It's not that God is uncaring, but there is an aspect of this that comes in to play if we reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we don't know Jesus Christ, then we are under the judgment of God, and the Word of God tells us in Hebrews that there's, there's a, a fearful looking forward to uh, the wrath of God that will, and that's a paraphrase, that will, that will destroy or will uh, consume the, the adversaries of God. So if we, are, if we are in opposition to God, this fear, this servile fear, um, is sometimes what draws us to Him. I, I, I'll give you just a, a testimony that I personally came to the Lord as a, at a very young age because I knew that I had I had sinned. I'd done things that were unpleasing to God, and and I was afraid of His judgment. And honestly, that was what brought me to the Lord. 
I, I shared even this past Sunday, though, that's not where I live anymore. I'm not afraid of, of the punishment or the judgment of God upon my life because as a Christian, I'm not appointed to wrath. I have, I have passed from death unto life, and I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I'm a new creature, and old things have passed away, and all things are become new. And, and now the fear of the Lord that I have is, is this, this other word. It's, it's, it's filial fear. And this refers to uh, the fear that a child would have for a loving father. This is fear, respect, honor that a child would display toward a parent if he or she has an extraordinary love and respect toward that father or mother. It's expressed in a deep desire to please that parent. He has a sincere aversion. The, the child has a sincere aversion to offending the one he loves not because of fear of torture or because of the fear of punishment, but because he or she does not want to displease, displease the one that is the child's whole world. Now, I have great parents, and uh, some of you might not, and I, I understand that. And um, if, if you don't, it makes it a little bit more difficult to relate to God in this way. But I want you to understand our God will never hurt you, will never harm you in, 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 if you are directing your love toward him. He is a, he's a benevolent, he's a good God, he is a good, good father. And, and you, can, you can pour all of your love on him without fear of shame, without fear of abandonment, without fear of, of, of wrath, and, and pour that love on him. And in the middle of pouring that love on him, you will see that you are showered with love. But back to what we're talking about, we're talking about this this filial type fear that that is it's 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 like a family relationship. We we consider God as our father. We know him as father. Even that's the way Jesus taught us to pray. He told us to pray our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we need to be looking at God as as a father, and if we're talking about the fear of the Lord in the in the aspect of being a Christian, this is the type of fear we need to have. This fear, this is the fear that is the beginning, the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. When we begin to look at God as holy, as righteous, when we respect Him above anything else, when nothing else comes before our relationship with Him. When, we, when, when our hearts are to the place that we do not want to offend him, but we want, to, we want to just shower our love on him because of the goodness that he's bestowed upon us, then we're getting to the place where we are, we're walking in this filial uh, fear and, and, and we, we can see the benefits of, of uh, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, this type of fear, this love, this respect, this honor, this this deep honor that's within us that no one, nothing is more important to us than God. We don't want to do anything to offend him. This is the beginning of wisdom. When we understand how to properly love God, then he begins to open up the kingdom to us because we are his children and, and we have been given through Peter as a representative of the church, we've been given the keys to the kingdom. He's the king. We are children of the king. We, we, we pour our love on him because he first loved us. But this, this is, a, this is a, a, big, a beginning and a proper beginning to wisdom when we learn to fear the Lord. Now, there are a few other benefits, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll go into those just quickly, of, of the fear of the Lord. We, without the fear of the Lord, we will continue to offend him. We will continue to sin against, sin against him, prominent in the body of Christ right now. The fear of the Lord is not present in the body of Christ as it should be. So many are walking in, in a lack of the fear of the Lord and therefore they're walking in continual sin, unrepented, un, uh, unforgiven, habitual sin because they are unconcerned with, uh, with offending God. They, they, they just don't have the fear of the Lord that's proper. Um, with the fear of the Lord, we'll strive to please him. Another benefit of the fear of the Lord is that uh, if fearing the Lord, in fearing the Lord, According to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 8, we will depart from iniquity. We'll depart from evil. Um, Hebrews 12, verse 28, I believe, tells us that we, we, uh, with this fear uh, of the Lord, with this proper fear of the Lord, we will have reverence toward God that allows us to go into acceptable worship. So with the fear of the Lord, we are also able to worship him in a manner that's acceptable 
This gives me the understanding that if I don't have proper fear of the Lord, I can't even I can't even worship Him in an acceptable way. And I want my worship to be acceptable before God. So therefore, I need the fear of the Lord. And then uh, the point that we made to start with, which is, is, is the primary benefit we're talking about today, without the fear of the Lord, or with the fear of the Lord, we have uh, the beginning of wisdom. But we also see in Proverbs 3, 1, Proverbs 9, 10, verse, chapter 9, verse 10 and 11, that the word tells us that the fear of the Lord adds length of life, length of days. So there's a lot of benefits to the fear of the Lord, but what we're talking about primarily is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, here's why the fear of the Lord, um, which is our access to wisdom, here's why the fear of the Lord is so important in understanding the Word of God and wielding the sword of the Spirit. And it's found in uh, several places, but primarily what I want to talk to you today about is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 14. New King James Version says, Now we have received. Who has received? We. The Apostle Paul, talking to the Corinthian church, he's talking to believers, he's talking to Christians. He says, Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. The Spirit who is from God. Who is that? That's the Holy Spirit. We have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. So that's the Holy Spirit. Um, I want you to also understand that the Holy Spirit is also called the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And there, there's a, a group of things that we can see in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. If you want to read that, you can. Uh, but, but the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom. So we have not received the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit, which is from God, which is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom, that we might know the things that has been freely given to us by God. Now, I'm going to pause right there, and I want to read a couple more verses, but we've been given the Holy Spirit for lots of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So we've, we've been given the Holy Spirit primarily for power to become witnesses. However, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 here tells us that we've been given the Spirit from God, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Wisdom, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. So we, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives, the Spirit of Wisdom, and, and we, can, we, can, we can gain understanding through the indwelling of the Spirit, but also uh, this, this comes with the fear of the Lord. We, we must honor Him properly for God to really work in us through His Holy Spirit. Now I want to read, I'll, I'll read what I just read, but I'll read on just a little bit. Um, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is from God, who is from God, that we might know the things that we have that have been freely given to us. This helps us to understand that with the Spirit of God, with the wisdom that comes from God, we will be able to understand the things that have been freely given to us. The Word of God is freely given to us, but it is difficult for us to understand. I'll read on. It says, uh, verse 13, the, these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Clarifies here that the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom. Let me go on. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What we're seeing here is that without the... With, without a, a healthy fear of God, we cannot gain wisdom. And we cannot gain wisdom also without the, the working of the Spirit in us. And if we are to understand the Word of God, then we need the Holy Spirit teaching us the Word of God. You can, uh, you can, you can read the Word of God and you can gain knowledge from the Word of God without ever really getting wisdom to put this to action in your life. You can read about being free but if you don't really get the, 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 the meaning and the discernment or the skill to live in that, as we talked about just a few moments ago, then, then we, will, we will not be able to walk in that freedom that we have been called to. Now, it's available to us. It's available to us as a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we as Christians have access to that. But the, the great way to access it and really the only way to access that, access that power is if we honor God properly. I'm telling you that to, to fear the Lord will bring 
an understanding to the Word of God because the Holy Spirit will teach you the things that the, the, the physical, the, the, the mental, the natural man cannot receive. That's why those who are not Christians or even those who are babes in Christ will often say, I just, I just can't understand the Word. I read it, but I don't get it. And that's why even, even for me as, as an example, I've been studying the Word for Man, I don't know how many years. I was I was a boy. I used to read the Word a lot, uh, but I I, I I am just now, it seems really uh, when I sit down, the Word just opens up to me, and I thank God for that. But all all of that is due to is is due to really honoring God with my heart, with my life, with with who I am, and 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 going after Him and being hungry for Him, and nothing is more important to me. Than him, and so the Holy Spirit teaches me, and I've asked the Lord many, many, many times for wisdom. I've asked Him to give me, uh, to give Him wisdom. I've asked Him to help me understand His Word, and I've asked Him to open up to me things that uh, that are not common knowledge for others. And it's not that it's not that uh, I'm anything special. I'm not. God wants to open this knowledge, this wisdom, to every one of His children. And all we have to do to really get it is to offer our lives to Him and and place Him first in our lives, really have a healthy fear of the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to teach you the Word. I, I want to uh, I want to read just a couple other scriptures uh, and I'll just give you so that kind of back up to this. Uh, Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all things. That's Proverbs chapter five, uh, 28 verse 5. And 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 says, Consider what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Now, there's two scriptures right here that back up what I've told you from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 through 14, that the Holy Spirit is the one that takes us into understanding or take, gives us the wisdom to understand the Word of God. Uh, those who seek the Lord understand all things and the Lord will give you understanding and everything from these two scriptures, Proverbs 28, 5 and 2 Timothy 2, 7. So the more I honor God in my life, the more I, the more I, 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 I give uh, myself to, uh, to him and to, and to further my, uh, my pursuit of him and, and have a healthy fear for the Lord, uh, the more his word comes alive to me. The more I make him a priority, the more he will open my understanding. The more I give my heart to him, the more my mind can take in, my, my spirit being can take in from his word. Um, you see, God is the author of the word. And so if he's the author of the word, he knows it better than anybody. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a big push, and I'll talk about this within a few weeks, maybe even next week, I'm not sure. There's a big push to uh, to diminish the importance of Scripture, to say that it's in to say that it's errant, but the Word of God is inerrant, to say that it was written by all these different men over the course of thousands of years, and it's got errors, it's got it's got flaws, um, and and it, a lot of people in the work uh, in in the, the Christian community are buying into that, but the Word of God is in it, it is inerrant in its original language, and we'll talk about that some of that more uh, in in probably next week. But let me read something to you from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Now, if you look this up in a literal translation, it says that all scripture is breathed by God or God breathed. God breathed it out. And, and, and we, as his children, should be breathing in what God has breathed out. This is the word. It goes on to say that it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This goes back to wisdom. It's the discernment. It's the understanding to be able to apply uh, with skill the knowledge that God has given us. Uh, the Spirit of God is the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, the, even the Word uh, in the original language. And we'll talk about some of those things still in the future. But um, the, the Word for the Holy Spirit, the Word for Spirit is pneuma. It's the same word for breath uh, in the New Testament. It's ruach in the Old Testament. It's the same word for breath. The Word for the Spirit and the Word for breath are the same. We're talking about the Holy Spirit really empowering us to understand and to live 
out the word of God. And if we will honor God properly, if we will honor his word as we read his word and take his word in and make it a priority and make him a priority in our life, understanding will come to us by the Holy Spirit. The, the, more you, the more you will fear the Lord, the more you will honor God properly in your life, the more God will speak into you. I believe with all my heart, as you honor God to a greater extent, as you honor his word to a greater extent, the scriptures will begin to open up to you. Um, we, we, will, we will see what to do with that to be sure that we're on the right track also in the coming weeks. So we'll talk about that then. God bless you.